Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about z-scores, the initial video on z-scores. And what a z-score is, okay, a z-score is how many standard deviations, how many standard deviations a data point, a data point is from the mean. This is a little informal definition, but but that's how we measure data points and statistics, okay? And and normally here, our, we want our data to be symmetric. We want our data to be symmetric because we're gonna. If I have a histogram that's somewhat symmetric, I can model it after. I can model a normal curve, but but if I have some x bar mean, all these x's are gonna fall somewhere around. Okay, this, I'm just randomly putting points here, but all these X's fall somewhere around this mean. We measure the distance from, we measure the distance from these X bars and standard D and Z scores, okay, and, and not necessarily um, in absolute distance, which, which would just mean this. If I have an X bar of 6 and I have, and my score happened to be a 10, then our distance would be 4. Then uh, x10 minus x bar would give you four, so I'm four away. But that doesn't tell me a distance relative to how much variance is going on. So a lot of people look at this definition here, and is how many standard deviations a data point is from the mean, and and they don't necessarily kind of get it. But um, let me go ahead and try to explain it a little more. And <clears throat> let's say I take a hundred data points, and we're going to go ahead and get heights. In, um, in a school and let's say the average of these hundred we'll say boys was a hundred or was 70 okay and let's say the standard deviation which is the typical distance all these people were away from there was 2.5 okay so now I'm gonna say okay well you came in you they weighed you or I'm sorry they measured you your height and you were 72 Point five inches, okay, and then you have to ask yourself, how many standard deviations were you from seventy? Okay, how many of these? Change the color. How many of these right here? How many of these? Well, if you take seventy. You take 72.5, well, to get from here to here, it's one, it takes one of these, one of these standard deviations. So you're one standard deviation away. So if this was you, your z-score would be equal to one, okay? So let's try another one, and I'm just going to make these fairly simple, okay? Let's say the same thing, x-bar was 70. And let's say the standard deviation is the same at 2.5. And let's say you came, you came in at 67.5. Okay? So you came at 67.5. So you're going to ask, if this is 70, how far were you away from the mean in standard deviations now in terms of how much variance was going on or how much error was going on with this distribution. So you're negative 2.5 away here. You're negative 2.5. So you're going to be negative 1 away. Okay, so your z-score here would be negative 1. Okay, and we have a formula for these. We have a formula to find the z-score. And, and to find the z-score, you have to know two things. So to find a z-score, and I'm sorry, that's, uh, that's not two things, that's three things. You must know three things, okay? You have to know the average, okay, 
or what we call mu, which I'll be talking about later, but this is the mean. This is a mean from the sample. Okay, this is the mean from the sample you take, and then this is the mean from everybody, from the population. So this would be the mean of the population. So you have to know this or this. Okay, we have to know the data point. And since I'm working with X's, I'm just going to call it X. You have to know the data point X. Okay, and we have to know, so we have to know this and this. And we have to know S, or we have to know sigma, which sigma is the standard deviation for the population. And this is the standard deviation of the sample. So it's all dependent on what they're talking about. This is the standard deviation of everybody, of the population. So I could almost write two formulas here for the Z. The mu goes with the sigma, and this describes my population. That's my population. And the X bar goes with this S, which just des describes my sample. So if I'm dealing with a population, which you will be, then the Z equals your X value minus the mean divided by the sigma. If you're dealing with the sample, then the z-score will be your x minus the sample mean divided by s. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this in much more detail when we use this for a model. Okay, so we model data. We'll get a sample, and if the sample looks relatively symmetric, we'll make a normal curve, which is a prob probability density curve, and we will do that. But this just for this video, I just wanted to make sure that you really understand what a standard deviation is. What a standard deviation is, because people get tricked up by that sometimes. Okay, I'll do one more real quick, and I'll say, and I'll make them easy. I'll make them easy right now. So I'll say, you came in and you got a 70, let's, or a 60. Let's say this is a test. You were a 60. So what is your z-score? Pause it and try to figure it out. Okay. So your z-score would be how many standard deviations 60 is from 80. How many standard deviations 60 is from 80? So you're, you're almost saying, well, what's a standard deviation? Well, standard deviation is 10. So they're actually saying, how many 10s? How many 10s is 60 from 80? Well, if this was 80 and this was 60 on a number line, we are two 10s two tens. So the z-score would be negative two because 60 is less than 80. Okay, so the z-score would be negative two. Okay, let's say your score was a 90. Okay, if your z-score was a 90. So I'd say well, how many standard deviations is 90 from 80? How many tens away is 90 from 80? And you would say I'm one ten away. I'm one ten away. It's how many standard deviations away? Okay, and and where we would use the formula, where we where we would use the formula, would be as if you got off. I'm going to talk about a lot this and a lot of this in modeling. But say you came in at something that doesn't fall on an exact z-score the way that I've been talking about. But let's say you get a z of 96. Okay, so we know if this is 80. Okay, and one standard deviation away would be 90, and two standard deviations would be 100. My data point is sitting somewhere like right here. So we know it's in between one z-score and two z-scores, but we would use the formula, which is z equals my data point, which is 96, minus the mean, which is 80, divided by whatever the standard deviation, which is 10. Okay, so 96 minus 80 is 16. If I divide that by 6, I mean, I'm sorry, if I divide that by 10, I'm just moving the decimal 1 to the left. So 16 divided by 10 is just 1.6. So my z-score there would be 1.6. Okay, so make sure you understand that it's how many of standard deviations it is from the data point to the mean. And be sure to watch the next video because we're going to be talking about this in much more detail. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it and have a nice day.